You clicked on this video perhaps because you're thinking about working while homeschooling or you're already in it and you need some inspiration. Uh, today, we're going to talk to Tiffany Pichardo um, and chat a little bit about homeschooling life, working from home life uh, in the trenches. So Tiffany, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Tiffany, you've got a lot going on in your homeschool and work life. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and what your life looks like these days? Yeah, absolutely. So I am a second generation homeschool mom and my husband and I have been married for just under 13 years. So it'll be 13 years in June. So we have four kids. Uh, we homeschool them all. We live on a five acre farm and uh, currently I'm on summer break. So what my day to day life looks, uh, it looks a little different than during the spring fall times. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm not one of those cool homeschool moms at homeschools during the summer. Summer break is just as much for me as it is for the kids. I take full advantage of a summer break. <laughs> right now, my days consist of working around five to six hours a day, usually in the mornings, but it's flexible. And then driving my kids to sporting activities and, and then just, you know, hiking and biking and spending time with my family. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay. I love the flex and the fact that you really are leaning into those busier seasons of your life and then actually backing off and uh, taking the time away when you can. So that's huge. Um, does your work schedule kind of stay pretty consistent with five to six hours a day throughout the year? Yeah, it does. It's yeah, it's pretty consistent. And just the way that it works with my clients, a lot of times there's projects. So if I have a slower week, I can just work on some of the projects. So I'm able to maintain essentially the amount of hours I want to work each week. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, tell us a little bit about your work. What type of work do you do um, and how did you get into it? Yeah, back in 2017, my husband was a sergeant and we had four kids and that's not a lot of income for a family of six. And we were just, we were just really broke. I remember thinking like, I wish we could just go out to Subway, but we can't even afford it. It's like, it's just too expensive with the family our size. So at the time, Working online wasn't even a blip on my radar. I never even considered working online. My husband would tease me I was afraid of the computer. And I just didn't even, I didn't even know what YouTube was. I, did, I just didn't have anything, any experience in the online working space. Yeah. So I was looking at working at Hobby Lobby just because I liked Hobby Lobby, but the pay was about $7 an hour. And I did the math, $7 an hour wasn't gonna cut it nope. and and, and I'd have to give up every single weekend because I was also not going to give up homeschooling. So right. it would just be work Saturday and Sunday. Well, Saturday because it's Hobby Lobby. Um, and so uh, I, you know, I kind of was putting out feelers like, what could I do? And my cousin was a virtual assistant. And I didn't know that at the time. But mm -hmm. as I started like looking for work, she ended up um, kind of just having a conversation with me and offered to hire me under her to, that she would train me how to be a virtual assistant and starting pay was $20 an hour. And at the time that was like life changing money. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And I couldn't believe I could do it whilst homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And that was like a huge thing to me because I really, well, that, that wasn't going to go away. I wasn't going to give up that. So like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the working and having flexibility. So she ended up hiring me. Um, within the next two years, I had about seven clients. I was no longer working for her. I was working for a multitude of other people. And uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of how I got into it. And I just started my own business. And what was that? All right. Wow. And so would VA still describe the describe you best, do you think? Oh, no, no, no. Um, virtual assistant, I would say there is a like a cap on how much you can make. And eventually, I was ready to break through that ceiling. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so now I'm an well, I think that's important manager. for people to hear because they might see, oh, I could be a VA. I can do this. And uh, maybe break down a little bit what that looks like. Because I feel like there are, there's like an OBM or something like that um, mm -hmm. as well. But kind of break down that, that distinguishing, those distinguishing factors, if you would. Yeah. So virtual assistants, I, I like to say like they kind of tend to have their like, they, well, moms probably make the best virtual assistants because we're so used to wearing all these different hats. Virtual assistants often are doing all these different things. They're maybe managing the customer service. They're managing the social media. They're um, maybe uploading projects for clients. They tend to actually be doing a ton of different things. And it, it, if you are a generality, like if you don't have a specific niche as a virtual assistant, it, it 
I just think there's a cap on it because you're not making yourself known for that one thing. So being a virtual assistant, I honestly feel like it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to start to try out all these different things. Are you great at customer service? Are you, are you great at numbers? Are you like, what is it that you're good at? And you can kind of find that as a virtual assistant, you're asked to do everything. <laughs> and so you can figure out what <laughs> the thing that you're best at. Yeah. And then from there, um, I think it's smarter to move into like a more specific area in which you can grow your expertise in one thing because you will get paid to be an expert in that one thing more than you will get paid to be generally good at everything if you're excellent at one thing. Yeah. And getting more efficient at the one thing, getting more done in a shorter amount of time and possibly bringing in more because you're working more efficiently and at a higher level. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Fantastic. All right, cool. Um, and beyond the VA kind of ceiling, what comes after that? What types of things could people specialize in? I mean, you mentioned uh, customer service and perhaps editing or perhaps, you know, social mm -hmm. media. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Would you say <laughs> there's so many options? There's so many options um, that you can, I think, kind of use your skills and what you learn as a VA. Um, yeah. A couple would be like a podcast manager or a YouTube manager. Um, both of my clients do YouTube. And so because of that, I got into the YouTube space. And then as you just learn and grow in the YouTube space, then you can use those skills more toward that. Um, online business manager is where you are overseeing the whole project or the whole business. Um, it's like you're the CEO of a company, right? And you're, mm -hmm. um, you're in charge of all of the, a lot, a lot of it is being in charge of the whole team. Mm -hmm. So they have someone to report to that's not the business owner because a lot of times the business owners are the entrepreneur, they're creative, they're thinking outside the box, they're doing a lot of things, but they're not necessarily like loving all the admin work. And as the business owner, you don't want to have, you know, six, seven, 10 people on your team reporting to you. So then you have the OBM who they're reporting to instead. And uh, so that's another great option um, that can that can work really good. Again, I think a lot of moms, I just feel like are really good at that because you're used to overseeing all these different areas. Yeah. Um, so good one. Um, social media manager, also something that you're going to probably dabble in as a virtual assistant. Um almost without doubt, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then yeah. um, and then you could use that, grow your skill there, read books, watch videos on that, and pursue that because as a social media manager, you can get paid more. Um, and then, yeah, a video editor would be another one, or even a podcast editor. Uh, that's another option. And then anything around writing, copy, editing, proofreading, those are all also skills that I know I know a lot of people, a lot of moms that have said to me like, well, I'd love to read. I'm not going to get paid for that. I'm like, yes, you will. You totally can get paid to read. Yeah, so yeah, to edit. That would be huge. Okay. This is really cool. And I love like hearing you name and kind of rattle off all these things because I feel like for a lot of the people who are watching this, perhaps who are online teachers, um, perhaps they're starting to diversify their online teaching business. Perhaps they're also homeschooling. Um, you have kind of started to build all these skills. Um, and this was me, 2021. I didn't have social media before 2021 um, and had spent the last, what, 10 years not doing anything on there. And then boom, having to learn it. Um, and you just pick it all up because you have to, because <laughs> you mm -hmm. have to. And so I love the idea of actually getting paid to do it, number one, as a VA, and then specializing and choosing because it's not all fun. It's not all exciting. Mm -hmm. I despise clicking every box when I'm, you know, listing a video or whatever. You know, there's these things that you tend to realize, I despise this, but I love this part, right? And so kind of figuring out what you love and whether that's, you know, in the VA world or something else, if you guys are, you know, noodling what this might be for you, um, take these words, kind of figure out what you might, um, what you might you know, choose as your, as your thing that you love to do. Because again, those hours that you have away from homeschool are going to be um, hopefully lucrative, but also something that you would enjoy and something you can maybe even pass on to your kids. I know that's been a fun thing byproduct um, with my kids. They see me editing and we'll say, Hey, can we do that? And then like the next day, my oldest, who's almost 11, she was like, I wrote this script. Can we shoot this with my friends? And so she did. And then she edited it. I was like, use my Canva child, go. Um, and just like seeing what they can do with it. So it's really cool. But um, let's kind of move into the homeschooling side. What were some of the things you worried about perhaps when you started 
this VA route, perhaps there were some moments in there when you were like, it's getting to be too much. How's homeschooling going? Should we adjust some things? What were some of the things that kind of came up during those first uh, first months, perhaps? With When it came to homeschooling specifically, I was really worried about how to make sure everything was legal, how to make sure my kids were learning exactly what they needed to learn. Mm-hmm. When it came to working from home whilst homeschooling, I, I would say that was a little bit more of a learning curve. I started out really small. Um, I would encourage anyone who's jumping into that to start small because if you jump in and you're learning something new and you're committed to working, like I felt at least that I didn't have the brain capacity to maintain homeschooling, parenting, because at the time, like I had kids ages 10 down to two. And so there was a lot of, a lot of homeschooling and a lot of parenting <laughs> at this time. Um, and mm-hmm. ages was two. So I started really small. Like I started started with like one to two hours a day. And that's really all I had the capacity for mentally because I was also learning. Like those might've been my working hours, but I was also, now I was reading books. I was watching YouTube videos. I was trying to learn it too. And I didn't count those hours. So between, you know, actually doing the work, learning how to do the work and, um, and the other things I was doing just as a mom, um, it, that part was a little bit bumpy at, and hard at first. It was just, just really exhausting. I remember, like some sleepless nights. I think that's normal. When you're starting a new business, yeah. all of a sudden you feel like if I don't get this email sent, like it's the end of the world. Yeah. Really not. Yeah. Yeah. It's the end of the world. Yeah. So. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of us can probably relate to that. Um, even just juggling the, you know, maybe if we count keeping our house clean, like part of a job, um, but I've, that's definitely a place where I'm like, meh, whatever. Um, <laughs> kids can, kids can help too. Uh, but there's, there's that sort of balance that you do have to find. And when your job, what's bringing in the money, um, also requires some, ex- apply some external pressure, we might say, mm-hmm. um, in terms of, you know, X number of hours or deadlines or whatever, um, that can put a crunch on us. And as homeschoolers, perhaps that requires a little bit more flexibility as well. Hey, we're going to do a half day of school today. Um, you guys enjoy the afternoon off. Um, I need to do, get some work done. And I think that's a valuable thing for kids to see too, just the flexibility and the intra-personal intelligence to say, hey, I'm feeling crushed right now. Let's all just back off for a second and let's let's enjoy the day um, and get this stuff done. So there's the beauty of homeschool is a lot of the flexibility that we have. And so when we're able to take it, I think that's really important to do. So your current situation is kind of a great fit. It sounds like you've got, um, you know, like you mentioned, five to six hours a day of work. Is there anything you'd like to kind of mess with in terms of your schedule? Do you see yourself adding more hours or um, is, do you think that's even necessary? Um, so I would say right now it's not necessary, but partly I am in school to become accredited in the profession that I'm in. So I, I'm already in it. I'm already doing the work, but credentials um, in, the, in the role that I am currently in, credentials mean you can get paid more for them. And mm-hmm. I just um, you know, I spoke to my husband. I said, I think this is worth the investment. If I can um, get my credentials in this, then that'll just increase our pay so quickly. It'll increase my income so quickly. And so currently I'm also in school. And because of that, my time is just um, is, is pretty full. And yeah. so um, so I wouldn't want any more work right now. <laughs> um, but as, when my school is done, then I'll definitely be transitioning and the hours that I spent doing my assignments and doing my schoolwork will then become working hours, which get paid instead of paying for. So that'll be nice. Win, win. Wow. Well, very cool. Bravo. Um, Was that a hard decision to decide to invest? I mean, it sounds like you kind of thought it out and you knew this would bring in more. Um, I know, especially for me, investing in my own business has been kind of a crunch point for me. Was that a hard decision for you or were you just kind of like, this totally makes sense? No, it was definitely a hard decision. Um, we had come out of like a pretty hard financial year just from ex- extenuating cir- circumstances that we really couldn't control. So I was working way less. And then, um, and then honestly, uh, I just felt like God kept kind of bringing up the OBM thing. Like I was asked to interview somebody who I wasn't planning to interview. It was the very last minute. They asked me to um, conduct an interview with Sarah Nokhead, who created OBM School. And, uh, and then 
there was some other communication with her. And it was just kind of, I just felt, honestly, I just felt like God was telling me to do this accreditation. Like I felt like yeah. this is what I'm supposed to do. And, um, you know, I talked to my husband about it. We have never invested that much in our business. I would say one of the best things about being a virtual assistant, zero money down. <laughs> you yeah. just get in there, you start working. If you have a computer, you can do it. So, yeah. so the choice to invest um, for school was actually like a pretty big decision for us. Um, yeah. But we just felt like it was the right thing. And God's really showed himself faithful to provide the money to pay for the school. And so Please. that's just... We did it. Say that louder. I feel like um, I, we talk about a lot of that a lot. Provision, um, trust. And when, you know, I, I feel like time and time again, you know, I lose a student for some reason out of my control. And then there's two more that show up without really any effort or whatever. I'm just like, thank you, Lord. And so here's to the fruit. Um, I'm excited for you. <laughs> I bet you're excited to be done. Um, but that's really cool. So thank you for setting that example. Um, let's kind of back it up a little bit. Let's talk to the people who are homeschooling. They're kind of coming to that realization. Uh, Hey, I probably need to also work. Um, maybe my spouse works right now. Um, and I just need to contribute something. What are some of the things that they should kind of think about first? What would you suggest they get in place first before then stepping out into a working and homeschooling situation? Yeah. Um, I would say first, like just sitting down, jotting down the writing on paper or if the computer is better for you, write on that, but sitting down and really going over all the things that you enjoy, the things that you feel like are kind of in your zone of genius. I like to think of it of a, uh, what is it called? A Venn diagram where you have like something you're passionate about, something you're good at, and then um, something you're an expert in. I forget. There's, there's a, there's three and it's an expert and it's, um, something new. Oh, something you're passionate about. Something that's like you can make money doing. In demand, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, demand for it. Probably that was probably the third. But um, yeah, sitting down and thinking through those things and kind of trying to see if there's something that overlaps. Um, and I think a lot of times like moms, especially moms, just that's also who I talk to, but I think so many times they underestimate themselves. They underestimate mm-hmm. what they're capable of doing. They underestimate um, their ability to make money doing something as simple as knitting. But there's people making a full-time living showing their knitting on YouTube. I mean, it, it's a thing. So uh, I just encourage you to sit down, write down everything you love to do, write down the things that you think you might be really good at doing, and then kind of see which of those might you know, fit into something that you could begin pursuing. And then don't be afraid to pivot because I think most of the time you don't find the thing, like the thing until the end or, you know, it takes a while. And so mm-hmm. not not feeling like a failure just because like the first one didn't work out, you know, just keep, keep going and seeing what's going to stick. Um, also really staying um, like focused on what is your core values and what you're going to commit to doing. So in my situation, it was homeschooling. I wasn't willing to give up homeschooling to work. That wasn't why I was into it. I was like, I'm going to work. I'm going to homeschool my children from eight to noon every day. Um, plus extracurricular activities in the afternoon. But the, you know, the table topics, that was eight to noon every day. And, and so then I would schedule my meetings around that. I would, I just, I worked my life around that because that was the priority. So I would say really making sure that you have that priority in place too, because it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also love to encourage people to think about like, how much time do you actually have? You could say like, oh, I have six hours too, just like you. But like when you actually look at it, do you really have six hours? Like when does lunch get made? Um, who mm-hmm. is taking the kids to soccer practice? Um, does bath time fall to you or to somebody else? Um, with those littles, there really is so much kind of extra time um, that we don't factor in. So trying to figure out, yes, what are those uh, those non-negotiables? What plates are ceramic and which plates are plastic and we can let fall sometimes. Um, and if posting on Instagram three times a week or getting a YouTube video up, um, is causing you stress and angst, let it go. Um, any other helpful advice or tools that you've found perhaps digital or print tools that you especially love kind of to keep you organized or on track? Yeah. I mean, for my own personal thing, I use Google, like Google calendar and I block out any times when I'm driving, like I try to make it very clear on my calendar, like 
you know, practice might be from six to seven, but I'm going to be gone from five to eight. <laughs> Things yeah. like that, just so, you know, yeah. setting the expectation for myself too of what's really possible. Um, yeah. So that's how I time block is with Google Calendar. It's very helpful, especially with, um, you know, multiple things you're juggling. And I share the calendar. My husband and I share it so that he always knows what's going on too. Um, and that way he knows, you know, things like tonight when I have an interview, he was like, oh, it's fine. I'll, I'll pick up our kids from uh, the gym and and then I'll keep them entertained in the other room. That's awesome. Um, I love that. And the partnership of a husband and wife, I think is so huge. Uh, my husband also works from home. And so our Google calendar is like the law when it comes to, hey, did you check it? Um, everything is synced. It's a beautiful thing when it all works out. Um, but just making sure the calendar is updated. I also love a good Google Keep. Are you into Keep at all? Oh, I haven't used it. Okay. If you look at your uh, just Gmail dashboard on the right side, mm -hmm. there's a little yellow... Um, light bulb. And I keep like links in there, hex codes, you know, just like all the stuff that you constantly have to search for. That's where it goes. Um, so okay. stuff like that, that is really helpful for helping me get my work done quickly. So then I can get down in homeschool or just go do other things faster. Um, that and then Notion is another great one. Lots of great free templates um, and very syncable um, with Google now. So work, I use Asana. Yeah. But for like my okay. own stuff, I use Google. Cool. Uh, question. As a VA, do you, let's see, do people hop into your system or do you hop into people's system in terms of like time tracking and stuff like that? I feel like that would be a, an interesting question. I've always wondered. Yeah. Um, it's, it just depends on the client. If they have systems yeah. in place, well, I'm happy to go into there. So with the, with the person I, so I've worked for Gillian Perkins for five years. She, she had systems in place and I just kind of merged into that. And that worked out beautifully. And then with um, my two most recent clients, I created it for them so that mm -hmm. then they, so I, I still set it up for them. Um, but I, I guess they let me do my own thing because I was coming into it kind of as like leading them in how to do their business yeah. and they mm -hmm. didn't really have systems in place. So if you mm -hmm. have somebody who has systems in place, I try to be flexible. If you have somebody who doesn't have systems in place and I just create it for them and help them that way. Nice fits it in. Very cool. Well, Tiffany, we've covered a lot of ground. Anything else that you feel like we've missed or would like to add in here? I would say there's a few benefits to working from home that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. The very first one was at the time that I started, like I said, I had a lot of small children and four little people. And I wasn't living near my family at the time because my husband was in the military. So we were across the country. And that... Um, starting work like I, I wasn't necessarily looking for validation as a as a person i was looking just for an income mm -hmm. but it actually really helped me grow as a person and it helped me to be a little bit more independent and like kind of grow into i like i've matured and my husband and i have talked about that a lot how much he enjoyed watching me get to be a professional get to have adult conversations in the daytime <laughs> um things like that um yeah. and that was a really big bonus to working. And it was, I think it can be such a good thing. Um, and also just, there's so many different opportunities. I just encourage you to, if, if working from home is something you want to do, or you feel like you should do, there's just so many wonderful opportunities. Like, I just, I feel like there's something for everybody. Absolutely. Well, there's so much out there and I would love for you guys to keep in touch with Tiffany because she um, is helping people on this journey. So if you would like to keep in touch with her, you'll find all her information linked below. Um, and I know you've got some exciting things coming. So be sure to check uh, all those links out below um, and ask her a question, tell her thank you for being here um, and keep in touch. Um, so Tiffany, as we wrap up, something we're always asking people around here is what's coming up in the next six months or so? What are you excited about? What sounds fun to you personally, professionally? What do you think? Yeah, um, I have a lot I'm looking forward to, I'm gonna be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm, my husband's got quite a bit of time saved off, so he's gonna take off a few months this summer. We get to just spend time together. Um, and just be a family together, which I'm really, really excited for. He's worked a lot the last you know, decade, so getting time together is going to be really fun. Um, I'm going to be 
as I assume, graduating. <laughs> that yeah. should happen. Uh, I've already passed part of my credentials, so I'm just continuing on and should be able to graduate this summer. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then just getting to uh, spend time as a family, um, just enjoying our space together. And it's kind of funny because it kind of circles back to just the things that make me happiest. Um, yeah. Having the position, like having the job I have allows me to do the things I would like I really want to do, which is spend my life with my family. That's why I homeschool is because I like my people and I want to be with them. So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Just family time and graduation and yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we're clapping for you already. Um, I'm excited for you. I know that's going to be probably a big weight off your shoulders. Um, well, enjoy the summer. Thank you so much for being here, Tiffany. I really appreciate hearing your wisdom on this. And for those of you guys watching, um, if nobody's told you yet today, thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. It's not always easy, um, but it's something that can help us grow. And um, it's really exciting to see you guys do amazing stuff in your space. Happy teaching.